Raisha Abdilla is the project lead uh, with Wikidata Software Collaboration Indonesia. She has organized various Wikidata events in Indonesia, including workshops, meetups, and also partnerships since 2018. Currently, she leads the Wikidata Software Collaboration Team in Indonesia, a project for a software hub in collaboration with Wikimedia uh, Deutschland, developing and maintaining tools to make Wikidata more accessible. Welcome, Raisha. Okay, welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Kelly, for introducing me. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today uh, at this session at LD4 conference. Uh, so I'm Raisha Abdillah, uh, and I'm here uh, joining you from Jakarta. And here I'm excited to share with you uh, how can we use Lexica to empower lexicographical data contributions to Wikidata. Okay, so uh, here's a quick overview of what I'm going to cover on my sessions today. So the first one is uh, we are going to start with an introduction to lexicographical data on Wikidata. So for those of you uh, who might not uh, familiar with lexicographical data, don't worry, uh, we'll get it covered. Okay, and then the second one uh, is we are going to talk uh, and discuss about the challenges in contributing to lexicographical data on Wikidata. Uh, which then leads us to the third part, uh, which is why uh, we present Lexica as a solution and we introduce the Lexica as a tool that uh, is designed to simplify the contribution to lexicographical data. And after that, uh, I'm also going to discuss a little bit about the design decision behind Lexica. And then next, uh, we are going to have a workshop session uh, where I'm going to give you a demonstration regarding how to use Lexica. And for those of you uh, who have already also downloaded the presentation that I put on SCAD, uh, you can also try to follow from that. And then the last part is about the future collaboration related to lexicographical data. Okay. So uh, let's begin with the quick introduction to lexicographical data on Wikidata. Let me start with a quick recap about Wikidata. As we all know, uh, Wikidata is a knowledge-based part of Wikimedia projects, and Wikidata itself uh, contains uh, structured data inside that. And the important thing of Wikidata is it's also linked to other databases. And then uh, in Wikidata, we also can access the data over there uh, in a multilingual way. And we can also edit every data over there on Wikidata because uh, it's a collaborative uh, way uh, to edit the data. And then after that, all of the data in Wikidata is also released under public domain or CC0. So if you want to use data on Wikidata, uh, you can use it directly. Okay. And what's most important in Wikidata is it's also made for humans and also for machines. So if you want to build an application uh, that will crawl the data over Wikidata, there are multiple APIs that you can use uh, to make sure that your application can run. Okay. And then uh, here is a glimpse of a Wikidata item for a human. So as we all know, a Wikidata item uh, usually contains concepts of the things that we have in the world. It can contain human, it may be a library, it can also be a museum or an ideas or an event that may happen in the past. Okay, and as an item in Wikidata, uh, it's actually quite similar. Maybe if you are also previously familiar with Wikipedia, Wikipedia has an article, but in Wikidata, the information over there is represented as a structured data. So every data is linked with each other. And in this, you can also see that uh, not uh, only that uh, it supports a lot of language uh, in its data label, it also has links to other Wikimedia projects. Okay, so that's a little bit brief about what is Wikidata. And now uh, about words in Wikidata. So how does it work? Uh, previously, we talked about concepts, but now how do words actually being represented in Wikidata? Okay. okay. 
in here, uh, we might also take a look at the differences itself. So why should we make it different between a concept of a mouse and a like seeing of mouse? Okay. A concept of a mouse, uh, it's actually an animal. So we know the animal uh, mouse has text and name, and then as an animal, it also has an average size. We can also see the picture of it. And mouse itself also linked to another database of Encyclopedia of Life. However, when we are talking about mouse as a lexeme, it's actually a word. And it is a word that's in English, and it has lexical category of a noun. And for the mouse itself, uh, because we are talking of mouse as an entry, maybe in dictionary, you can say, it also have the forms, like a plural forms that is irregular. And as a word, uh, it also has the etymology of a mouse. And we can also see that uh, for the Lexi mouse, it has two senses. One is mouse as an animal, and then the second one is as computer device. And also as Lexi, it has audio pronunciation and also translations in other languages. Okay, so now we should go deeper into a Lexi structure. Okay. So uh, we can see over here that uh, Lexim uh, contains a structure that is quite different with Wikidata items. With Wikidata items, usually we only have uh, the basic information of the item itself, and then uh, under that, we have a lot of statements. However, for the Lexims, we have Lexims, and then there is thing called Lemma, and then Lexical Category. So lemma is the base form of the lexeme, and then lexical category is a part of speech. So we know that a word sometimes uh, can be categorized as a noun. It can be categorized as an adjective or as a verb. So that's part of lexical category. And then also a language which lexeme belong to. So mouse belongs to English. In Indonesia, for example, we call it tikus. Those are different lexemes, even though uh, both actually correlated with the same concept. And then uh, with lexemes, another thing that we should take care of is lexeme also has statements, but another important structure that only presents in lexemes are senses and forms. Okay. So uh, for this one, uh, let me also cover it in more easier way. So lexeme itself is a language element that has meaning. So lexeme can be a word, can also be a phrase sometimes. And in lexemes, it has lemma. Lemma is the base form of a word. So for example, if we have sing and then sung and then singing, the lemma would be sing itself. Okay. And then for some languages that have two writing systems, uh, they can also uh, be represented as two lemma. So for example, in Japanese, we have one uh, lemma in Latin writings, and then the second lemma is in Hanacharaka or Japanese script. And then after that, as I said before, it has lexeme language and it has lexical category. For the statements, it contains uh, deeper information about lexeme. So for example, it's etymology. And for the sense, sense is the meaning of the context of lexeme. For example, if we have like sim dog, then the senses of it is we say that it's an animal that has four legs, for example. And then with the forms, forms it's actually a specific or inflected form of a like sim. For example, we have dog and we have dogs as plural. Okay, uh, here uh, you can see that uh, I'm taking a look at like sim mouse in English. Uh, and the structure itself, uh, it starts with the lemma, mouse, and then it has the language and lexical category of it. Below there, you can see the statements. And then here is the interesting part, the senses, where all of the meaning uh, related to the lexeme in multiple languages can be put. Okay, So this one, we are taking a look uh, at the senses of a mouse as an animal. And inside the senses, there are smaller statements inside there. So 
there are statements that is nested under the sense. This is uh, why the structure of like sim is different uh, with the item. Okay. And then next, uh, this is the second senses. So in Wikidata like sim, a like sim can have multiple senses. Uh, so for example, for this like sim mouse, both senses are contained in one like sim. And then next, uh, this is the example of the form. Uh, so for the forms itself, uh, we can add also another nested statements inside the forms, such as a pronunciation audio or hyphenation for every forms that that like sim has. Okay. And here, uh, you can also take a look uh, and maybe try out the queries uh, to see the distinct languages of Wikidata like sim. And we can see that uh, the German uh, has the biggest number of like scenes currently in Wikidata. Okay. And then next is uh, the relevance of the relevance of like scene, uh, for research activity. So because we know that the like scene itself is machine readable, uh, just like any other entities on Wikidata, like scene, uh can be queried and we can also crawl into the like sims in Wikidata by using a script or PyWikiBots, for example. And then after that, uh, because the like sims in Wikidata uh, are also machine readable, uh, it can also ha can have multiple reuse and application. If you're interested in making a multilingual translation, uh, for example, if you want to have a translation between uh, languages, a combination that uh, someone might not thought about it before, we can have it with uh, using the data from Wikidata. And we can also give more context to the like sim itself because uh, we can see that like sims, uh, we can put image over there, we can put pronunciation audio over there. And then in each like sims, you can also see that the like sim itself uh, can also contain the usage example. So we know how these like sims or this word is actually used in daily life. And then after that, for the text analysis part, uh, if you're interested in doing sentiment analysis and then name entity recognition, and also etymology exploration uh, because we can put the the language tree. So like uh, we can say that this lexeme comes from the other lexemes. Uh, it's interesting if you are uh, if you are engaged in uh, uh, in a language history and see uh, how do certain words or certain lexemes evolve over time. And then the last part is for the language acquisition tools. Uh, there are a lot of tools that can be built using like sims, uh, like flashcards, and then also grammar exercises and pronunciation practices. And for the pronunciation audio that present in like sims, it's actually linked to Wikimedia Commons. So you can also use the file of the audio itself. Okay. Now, how can we get the best of both worlds? How can we link the information that we have in a Wikidata items as a concept with the like sims. Okay. So in the structure wise, uh, the like sim on Wikidata can be connected to an item through a property called item 40 cents. Okay. And this connection will create a multilingual web of knowledge where each word is not just standalone because now this word or this like sim can access the information of an item on Wikidata. So this concept can also transcend language because of this connection between the two. Okay. Here, uh, for example, uh, when I try to take a look at like seems night and at the senses of night itself, I can link that into an item for night as a concept. So I have night as a word and then night as a concept. And these two didn't just stand differently. We can connect. Uh, these two entities in Wikidata. Okay. So here is the connection. Now the like seems can access the data inside the items. Okay. 
and why it matters okay so the links between lexemes and item can make it easier for us to search because now the search can be more contextualized because it contains both information from the lexemes and the concepts itself and we can also integrate the data between the two and the connections between lexemes and items can also be queryable via sparkle because uh, from this connection it can also allow researchers to pull information from the web oceanographical data and to answer complex question like here i put in a sample what words in language x are linked to a concept y right and for multilingual except uh, for multilingual aspect behind it uh let's say we have a concept wind and it can be linked to the word of wind in dozens of language in the world Here's the example of the query, and you can also try to check the query by visiting the link that I put on the slide. And uh, in this query, uh, I'm trying to find all of the like theme that is linked to wind as a concept or item in Wikidata. And here are the results. So you can see that these like themes all come from different languages. So imagine if we usually only have let's say in indonesia we have only indonesian english and then english indonesian dictionary but now with this connection between lexeme and item i can pull every single translation of the lexeme that i want and this is very powerful and it can also be both ways this is one of the example of why linking lexemes to item is important Okay, now we know that such meaningful connection can actually be made by a very simple contribution. That's just, we just need to do one link via item for this sense, right? But there are actually challenges in a data contribution. So the first one is there is a technical complexity when you want to try to add it to lexicographical data itself. Uh, because for newcomers that has been yet attend or like read the documentation, it might seem quite technical for them because there are a lot of aspects and the structure itself is also different with Wikidata items. There is census, there is forms, there is graphical, there is a there is a lexical category. Uh, those uh, elements didn't exist first in items, for example, and that might impose a high learning curve for newcomers and then the second one is there is a usage of highly specific terms because lexicographical data about language uh, the terms that's being used uh, when we want to contribute might be very very specific and that might become hard uh, for someone that's new to understand about all of the terms and then the second one is there is a limited mobile accessibility currently to edit lexicographical data. So uh, when we try to ask the community member to edit lexicographical data directly from their mobile phone, uh, they tend to not use the mobile view of uh, lexicographical data on Wikidata. So what they did, so what they did is they try to change. Uh, the settings on their mobile phone into desktop mode because uh, that's what they are used to and it's actually quite hard to edit it via mobile because you have to constantly do zoom in and zoom out and try to replicate the experience when you are editing it in pc and then the third one uh there is a steep barrier also for someone that's not uh that's not based uh, from technical background uh, because linking between one data to another uh, might be difficult and then also uh, sometimes there's also confusion uh, where should I put uh, these properties for example should I put it in the like seam white should I put it in the statements should I put it inside the census or inside the forms uh, this can impose another barrier for someone to contribute and then the next part is also the lack of lack of documentation in underserved language because right now the lexicographical data documentation uh, 
the the complete one uh, are in English, and we need more effort to translate it into underserved language in the world, so that everyone can use and also can understand it. And these uh, challenges uh, may have caused low participation from newcomers because they feel that oh this is uh, hard and they didn't want to contribute wrong data into lexicographical data. So uh, the lexicographical data sphere itself uh, become consisting of people who is highly experienced of uh, contributing to Wikidata. And then the second one is there is also not enough contributions from underserved language because of the lack of documentation itself. So uh, there are things that people who speak the language might not fully understand about how it's going to be structured in Wikidata because, well, people might know that, okay, this word uh, means this thing. However, when we try to kind of like break it down into forms and then and then senses, and then after that, maybe another statement and etymology that might need a lot of consensus of the speakers of the language itself. And then the third one is uh, because of all these challenges, uh, there is a long road uh, for us to achieve a good quality of lexicographical data. And the last part is because the quality of lexicographical, a good quality of lexicographical data, especially for underserved language. Uh, it's, uh, we haven't yet achieved that. Uh, there is an other possibilities uh, that can allow us to further use of the data. Okay. And then uh, that's why, uh, because we know all of these challenges and we also know that actually linking like seems to items should be something simple. We then come up with a tool that can simplify micro contribution to Wikidata. Okay, so uh, for this, uh, this is the interface of Lexica, the tools that we built. Lexica is a mobile-friendly tool that simplify micro-contribution to lexicographical data on Wikidata. So uh, a keyword here is micro-contributions. Uh, we understand that uh, it might be a lot for someone to understand like the whole structure of lexicographical data. Therefore, we try to make it into small manageable tasks for everyone. Okay. So Lexica was specifically designed to lower the barriers to contributing to lexicographical data by providing a streamlined interface and also making sure that the contributions will be accessible for all, especially for non-experts and also people that like to edit Swiki by using their mobile phones. Okay. So how does it work? Uh, so Lexica operates using a stack of cards model. Uh, and when you are trying to log in uh, to Lexica using your Wikidata account, uh, you will be presented with small manageable tasks like one is linking Lexemes to items. And the Lexemes itself, we will give you uh, in the form of cards. So you didn't have to search it by yourself. And you can directly work on the like themes in the language that you want to contribute to. Right now, uh, we support one activity uh, using Lexica, but in the future, we have upcoming activities that we will also add into Lexica. So stay tuned for this. Okay, this is the uh, view of the interface uh, of Lexica. Uh, you can see that uh, in the header of this card, uh, there is a census for the Lexeme Blossom, uh, and then it directly asks you the question. So, which items uh, does this uh, Lexeme has the same concept? And from there, we give you the recommendation, and you can choose from the recommendation that we give. However, if you think that the recommendation is not uh, quite right or quite suitable for the Lexi itself, you can also search it by using the search bar in the card itself. And these are not just the details of the Lexi that we can provide, but also the details of the items that you are going to link. So, okay. So 
how do we simplify micro contribution and why do we design things uh, the way we did? Okay. So by making sure that we present it as a stack of cards, uh, we want to make sure that we can break down the contribution process into manageable tasks uh, because we know that people might be overwhelmed uh, to learn all the structure of Wikidata. And also sometimes when you are on the go, you just want to do, you just want to contribute. For example, maybe when you are in a, in a public transportation or when you are, uh, when you are in a break time or maybe before you sleep, you just want to contribute to Wikidata. Uh, but Back then, maybe you have to open your laptop and then uh, try to have all data covered beforehand. But with Lexica, we hope that by putting just small manageable tasks, you can continue your contribution uh, whenever you are. And then also, because uh, it's only one activity, we want to make sure that it can help the contributors to feel focused in what they are doing. And also because we present the Lexims directly, it also make sure that people didn't confuse in what to contribute first. Because what we see uh, in our research before, and also in our workshops, when we try to ask people, hey, let's contribute to this Lexim, sometimes people are confused or like couldn't determine which Lexim should they start their contribution to. Because there are a lot of words in the world and you just didn't know. But with Lexica, because we give you, hey, this is the Lexemes that has a neat link. Please help us link it. You can do it directly without uh, without uh, making that first step decision. Okay, and then the next one, uh, this is about the details itself. So why do we give the function for the contributors to take a look at the details of the Lexemes and also the items itself that uh, we are going to link using Lexica is because we want to make sure that the contributors uh, that want to edit using Lexica will make an informed contribution will make an informed contributions so it allows the people there to double check the details uh, before confirming that okay uh, this is something that I'm going to link uh, it will give reassurance to people that they are going to link this, the right concepts or disturbable concepts between the two and also minimizing the risk of errors uh, that might come from this linking process okay other than that uh, we also provide a dark mode option uh, to improve usability so as I said before uh, for those of you who like to edit Wikidata, maybe like at two in the morning, <laughs> just uh, right before you sleep, or uh, or maybe in another places uh, uh, where you are out and you didn't want the screen to directly pop up, then you can use the dark mode theme uh, to edit Lexica. And then uh, for this, uh, this picture is designed with accessibility in mind and this also come when we try to discuss with our community members uh, they said that uh, they need this dark mode and so that's why we put this in prioritization okay and then next also the multilingual support so the, currently uh, people who is using lexica can choose to contribute to Lexemes in Bahasa Indonesia, Bahasa Melayu, Banjar, Dutch, English, Jawa, Minangkabau, and Sunda. And we plan to add more languages in the future. So please let me know uh, in uh, maybe in Zoom call if you want to request uh, your languages to be added also in Lexica. And I would be very happy to prioritize that. Okay, so next, uh, this is the workshop part uh, regarding how should we use Lexica. Before we start, uh, I'm going to stop my screen share first because I'm going to change into another mode. Uh, for those of you who uh, who didn't have a Wikimedia account first, uh, I want to let you know that you can create one by going to Wikidata and then go to create account on Wikidata uh, because in order to use Lexica, we are going to use our Wikimedia account. Okay. So, 
So I'm going to share another part. Okay. 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 Uh, so to access Lexica, uh, you can go to lexica-tool.toolforge.org. Okay. Let me hover it a little bit. Yes. Okay. This is the URL for Lexica. Lexica-tool.toolforge.org. Okay, let me look at it again. Okay, so this is the uh, look of Lexica if we try to access it using mobile phone. Okay. You can also access Lexica by using PC if uh, that is your preference, but I suggest using your phone to get uh, the experience of editing it. Okay. If you already have a Wikimedia account, you can directly log in to Lexica. Okay, here I'm going to log in using my uh, volunteer account. Okay, when we're logging to Lexica, it will ask us permission uh, because we are going to perform direct edits to Wikidata by using this tool. Okay, then uh, we can allow it by clicking allow over here. Okay, here is the homepage of Lexica. Okay, and in this homepage, there are a lot of things that you can do before start uh, to contributing. Uh, the first one is there are other information regarding the uh, behind the story of Lexica in the about session here. And then there is also the privacy and license for Lexica. And other than that, uh, there's also the people account over here there is a sorry user icon over here where if you see uh, you can also change your settings here for example uh, this is a light theme and if you like to change it into dark mode for example you can change it using like this okay so let me get back okay so before that i will try to change it into light theme again and then uh, we can also change the display language uh, this is something that uh, you need to understand that display language is different with the contribution language so display language is for the user interface but contribution language is the language of the lexemes that we are going to contribute to for display language or interface language currently we only have two uh, and you can choose between Bahasa Indonesia or English Okay, let's stay with English for this workshop. And then here uh, we can choose which language uh, that we are going to work with. So uh, this one, uh, let me start with choosing English as the language of contribution. And before we start contributing, we can also read the tutorial uh, for Lexica. So if you want to know uh, what is Lexica and uh, how do the components of Lexica uh, actually uh, correlate with certain functions. You can take a look and learn from the tutorial over here. Okay. And also the anatomy of a contribution card. Uh, what should you do? And what's the function for certain action buttons? And yeah, those are the tutorial for using Lexica. Now we can start contributing. Okay, now let's wait for the cards to be loaded. Okay. Now we have these like seams called friction. Okay. And what we see from these like seams uh, is that the senses uh, for this is difficulty between people. Okay. Okay, we can try to take a look. Is there another statement inside? the senses and currently there is no statement. So at least we have an information from the meaning of these lexemes. Okay, then we can try to take a look at which item below has the same concept as the lexeme sense above. Okay, okay, from what we see over here, 
uh, this friction, uh, I think this is something that's related to physics and not uh, friction over here. And this one is also not the thing that we are looking for. And this one certainly also not the thing that we are looking for. If you want to make sure, we can also take a look at the details of the items presented here. Okay, okay, correct. This is something related to physics. So force resisting the relative motion of solid surfaces. Okay. And then for this one, we can also take a look. Okay, this is clearly a Japanese rock band. So this is clearly not the friction sense that we are looking for. Okay, if we didn't see it in the recommendation, we can also try to find an item. Uh, maybe if Wikidata has it. Okay, let's try to see here. Is there another friction? Okay, that's related to this one. Okay. Okay, we didn't see another friction that related to this like seams. But if you have maybe another keyword that you think would be suitable for this, you can also search it because that might result in the same concepts that we want. So the search result here doesn't necessarily mean that it has to have like the same labels of it because Wikidata items can sometimes have multiple labels. But what we are looking for is actually the concept itself. However, since for this one, I'm not sure because uh, English is not my native language uh, and I don't want to make any uninformed contribution. That's why I'm just going to skip this lexeme for now. Okay, next we have lifespan. Okay, for this uh, lifespan, uh, we can take a look that this is a length of time for life. Okay, and there is no more statement, so we have to work with the fact of this like seam is the length of time for life. And we can see over here that, okay, we actually have like see, uh, sorry, we actually have an item or a concept that's very related and something that we are looking for with our uh like seams over here okay so i'm going to take a look at the details first to make sure that this is something that correlated with what we are looking for and it seems like uh we can see the description of the item over here so a lifetime has a description that it's a duration of life for an organism okay so this is the closest concept that we have with this lifespan that we are looking for and then I'm going to take a look at another items just to make sure. Okay, this one, certainly not. This is a medical organization. And this one, this one is actually interesting uh, because it seems similar, but it's actually more specific because this is talking about a matrix. So product lifetime, uh, it might correlate with the software or something. Okay. Let's try a little bit more, maybe just to make sure that we are quite sure that this first item is what we are looking for. Let's try to search again. Okay, is there another thing? No. Nope. So uh, I think we can sure that uh, this first item is actually something that we want to link with our light scene. So we can click on this. Okay. And then we can click next. Before we finalize the linking process, uh, we can see that Lexica present us with a preview of the lexemes that we are going to link with the item. Okay, here uh, it's it says that okay, what we are going to do is actually we are going to link the lexeme lifespan with the item lifetime. Okay, and if we are sure. Uh, that this is the contribution, that uh, we are confident that this is true, then we can click done. Okay, then the contribution will be uploaded to Wikidata. Okay, this is another Lexemes, uh, and 
the basic of how to edit it is actually the same. Okay, so if you're unsure, you can just skip the like seams. And if you're sure, then you can directly click next and try to upload your contribution through Lexica. Okay. Here, we can skip it. Let's say we skip the like seams. And then this one, let's say we skip it also. Okay. And then after that, uh, let's say that, okay, uh, I think I don't want to use Lexica anymore because let's say you want to go to the bathroom or there is someone calling you on the phone. Then what can you do? You can also terminate the session by clicking on this end session over here. Okay. Then it will tell you uh, how many cards uh, you have been looking, uh, you have been, uh, you have been working on, and then you can just end session. Okay. So that's how you can use Lexica to do the basic contribution to lexicographical data on Wikidata. Okay. If you have finished contributing, you can also tap over here and then click log out. Okay, so that's how we can use Lexica to do a simple contributions to lexicographical data on Wikidata. Then I'm going to continue again with my slide. Okay, here uh, in my slide, uh, after this session, you, you can also take a look at this uh, and maybe uh, try to do things on your own after this. Okay, here I'm just going to skip this slide because uh, we have demonstrated this before. Okay, the last part is for the collaboration. Okay. Uh, with Lexica, we really hope that you can be part of Lexicographical Data community in the future. You can start by try editing Lexicographical Data using Lexica and then also joining the Lexicographical Data Telegram group where there are a lot of very meaningful discussions happen over there uh, related with Lexicographical Data. And then for the development of Lexica itself, we are also really waiting for your feedback. So if there are things that we can improve or if there are language that you think should be added to Lexica, uh, let us know about it. And also, uh, we will also be very happy uh, if you have any uh, critics or suggestions regarding uh, your experience in using Lexica. And in this, uh, for more information about how to use Lexica, you can also go to the product page of Lexica that presents on Wikidata. And then the last part. Okay, so this is the month of October where Wikidata actually turns 12 and Lexica is actually our birthday present to Wikidata. So if you want to know more about Lexica or uh, you want to join and celebrate it, uh, you can go to the uh, birthday, Wikidata birthday prison calls uh, that will be hosted by Wikimedia Deutschland online uh, in these two time zone. Uh, and also you can check for Wikidata event uh, that's happening around you. Uh, there are a lot of events happening uh, around the world uh, during the month October until November, and it's all about Wikidata. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, for me, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for uh, attending uh, this session here. I really hope that uh, from this, you can start contributing plus graphical data uh, using Lexica, and then uh, make sure that the data offer, offer there is linked between the concepts and the language. Yeah, and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you, Raisha. That was fantastic. Uh, I'd like to echo the comments here about the simple interface and the design of the tool, I think is really great. So please, if you have questions or comments for the workshop that we just saw, um, feel free to enter them in the Slack channel here in the Zoom or to raise your hand.
I think we have one already. Uh, Jessica says, so very cool. What has been the feedback so far with the tool? Have users shared instances where this has improved their workflows or other outputs? Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for the question. And for this, uh, the feedback uh, that whenever we present Lexica, we are happy that they also find uh, the tool to be very easy to use. Uh, even sometimes before uh, before we truly like presented it or like giving the demo of it, they can directly just use it by mobile phone and just clicking and learning by themselves. So uh, that's something that uh, we are really thankful for that. And then uh, another thing that uh, they said is the feels uh, is quite different uh, because now it's very uh, optimized for mobile experience. And things related to the uh, to the inputs itself uh, is actually interesting because uh, whenever we talk about this uh, to experienced editors, for example, uh, they want to add more details to Lexica, and this is where we sometimes have to balancing out between making it two details uh, that will make the newcomers afraid or like overwhelmed with all the information, but also making sure that the information inside Lexica uh, is also meaningful enough that the experienced editors can also feel that we are, uh, can also understand that uh, we are actually doing the right thing with the tool. So it's like balancing between having to add like more things and more capabilities in Lexica while also putting on Hey, maybe let's keep this simple. It's, it, that's the hard part in developing it. <laughs> yeah. Giving a few moments if there's any more questions that can come in for Raisha. Timothy is asking, are there some languages harder to work with in Lexica than others? Can you describe any specific challenges along those lines? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, there are languages that's harder to work with uh, Lexica. Uh, uh, for example, uh, for a language that has uh, non-Latin characters, for example, uh, we have to make sure that uh, uh, we can show it uh, in the in the right way and, and we are for example, right now, uh, we are working with the language that we already know, but since there are a lot of language in the world, that's also why we didn't put like all language to be edited by Lexica, because we want to make sure that uh, it has uh, the right uh, display for each language. And then uh, another thing, uh, for example, uh, our past uh, our past experience, for example, with uh, German lexemes. So, uh, with German like seems the okay what is it the descriptions of the like seems sometimes uh, containing a composita so a very long German word and then uh, because this is very long and it is contained as a single word uh, it makes a dissonance with the display like somehow the information icon goes uh, outside of the boundaries and that's why okay now we have to take a look at a specific way of how we should handle certain language because because that's different and another challenges uh, that we might see coming in the future and 
and we are still uh, not quite sure how we handle it is for language that has a right to life uh, right to life uh, display for it uh, because the challenges is that uh, we also have to use codex design system that's built by Wikimedia Foundation to make sure that the fields also align with other Wikimedia products. But in the sense, uh, Lexica is also is its own product. So we have to make things customized for RTL uh, languages. So those are uh, specific challenges uh, in building this tool. Oh, and also another thing is uh, when we are, uh, okay, for activities in Lexica uh, related with linking Lexemes to items or the upcoming activities that we plan to add in the future, we have to take a look at each documentation of the language itself in Wikidata because each language uh, has its own consensus and we didn't want to make uh, things wrong uh, if we didn't read the consensus first within the community. So we we really have also to learn about the language and how do certain uh, lexemes are being modeled in Wikidata by its own speakers. So that's also the challenges. Yeah, I can imagine that would be quite challenging dealing with translating between languages and making sure we're getting the, the meaning correct behind them. Um, yeah. I have a question, actually, I may have missed this um, in the workshop, but if if a user has a question while they're doing the work and they're not sure how to proceed with something, is there some kind of feedback button? Oh, uh, we didn't put a feedback uh, button yet, uh, but what we, we keep it simple by saying that uh, if there is something that you didn't think that you are sure, you can just skip the like seams. Because by skipping the like seams, uh, we also give the chance of that like seems to be edited by other contributors. So uh, maybe they have uh, more deep concepts about that own like seems. And it's okay to skip like seems because sometimes we didn't have to know all meanings of the world. Great, thank you. No worries. I'm just checking the channels now to see if any new questions have come in. If not, maybe we can wrap up and take a quick five minute break or so before our next presenters. Yep, I think we are gonna take a really quick break and come back at in about five minutes here for the next presentation, which is Disclosing Linked Open Data at NUWA Institute. Thank you so much, Raisha. Okay, thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you so much, uh, the four team, for these wonderful experiences. I really learned a lot uh, during uh, this uh, the last three days uh, conferences.